If you fancy taking a cruise on the wild side where fish swim through trees and long-tailed monkeys occasionally tussle your hair, then keep watching episode 88 of Planet Cruise Weekly as we explore cruising the Amazon River. Well, hello and welcome to episode 88 of Planet Cruise Weekly, the UK's only cruise information show where we discuss and explore the wonderful world of cruising and offer you inside info, knowledge and advice. I'm Keith, I'm an ex-cruise director. Oh, you're cruise director, eh? never mentioned it. And this week I'm joined by my good old cruising buddy, uh, Glenn, from our Cunard days, who of course is known these, these days pretty much as the king of the cruisers. He, he does an awful lot of cruising. No, I don't, not as much as I'd like to. Well, I know you'd like to do more, but you, you're doing more than I'm me at the moment. to Lisbon next week. Yeah, he's off, just casually off to Lisbon. So, as you already know, every week we do look at something different. And this episode will be focused on one of the world's greatest cruising adventures, exploring the world's second longest river, the mighty Amazon. Uh, and it counts, would you believe this, Glenn, for 20% of the Earth's fresh water that's discharged into our oceans. Really? It all comes from the Amazon. Uh, in fact, it ranks as the world's largest river for its multitude of tri tributaries. <laughs> that's easy to speak, I know. <laughs> and the volumes of water it discharges, which is estimated during full flood to reach a mind-boggling 32 million gallons every second. Now, thanks to modern day cruise ships, you can now explore the incredible part of the world in complete luxury. So let's have a look at the Amazon. Now, if there's one reason why you need to put an, uh, an Amazon River cruise at the top of your travel wish list, it's the region's amazing biodiversity. Now, the Amazon cuts a path across the continent of South America and makes its way through Brazil, Colombia, and Peru. Now, more than a third of the world's animal species live in this vast river basin's rainforest, and a cruise along the mighty river will introduce you to squirrel-sized tamarind monkeys, three-toed sloths, monk saki monkeys, scarlet macaws, Amazon river dolphins, Amazonian manatees, giant otters, anacondas, caimans, bull sharks, piranhas, electric eels, jaguars, and if wildlife encounters aren't enough, you'll also visit villages deep in the heart of the forest where few outsiders ever venture. Now, the largest tropical rainforest on Earth, Amazonia, encompasses 7 million square kilometres throughout South America, and an Amazon cruise holiday will give you a unique insight into this great wilderness. Now, there are many ways sailing up the Amazon. The locals do it in narrow canoes uh, or larger motorboats hung with tiers of coloured hammocks, their version of an overnight ferry. Visitors do it rather more comfortably on cruise ships or substantial, well-appointed riverboats. Now, cruise passengers also have the choice of sailing the Amazon in Brazil or in Peru. <laughs> now, the Amazon, uh, the Amazon is technically a year-round destination, and there are pros and cons to cruising there in both the wet season of December to April, that's when we went, and the dry season, which is May to November. Now, most people automatically assume the dry season is the best time to go, but you need to bear in mind that even the dry season is not really dry, as the rainforest obviously gets rain at any time of the year. However, the rainfall and water levels will be lower, and more jungle paths will be accessible then. Uh, if you do want to get up close and personal with sloths, then the dry season is the best time to do it. You'll be able to explore further ashore on foot uh, and you won't be as plagued by mosquitoes. On the other hand, it will be hotter by an average 12 degrees than in the wet season. So expect temperatures in the mid to high 90s. If you prefer floating, then the wet season is the better option for you as water levels are on average 21 to 23 foot higher, so it's easier to explore some of the Amazon's smaller tributaries. You'll also see a richer variety of wildlife, partly because the higher waters will take you nearer to the forest canopy, and partly because flowers and plants are in full bloom at that time. So monkeys and exotic birds come closer to the river's edge to feast. The downside, mosquitoes might come out and feast on you. So let's have a look at the main highlights and ports of cool that you're likely to visit on Amazon Cruise. First up, Paratins, as I'm reliably informed is pronounced. It is, Paratins, yeah. Paratins indeed. Uh, now the small village of Paratins lies on what they call the, here we go, go. the Tupacabrana Island. Really? What one was it? Because <laughs> you can always get again. confused on them island. What island is it? <laughs> Which is part of a large river archipelago in the mid-Amazon. 250 miles east of Manaus, it lies in the midst of a dense rainforest and is accessible only by boat or plane. And it's phenomenal. Now, in existence for two centuries, Paratins is rich in Indian culture that is represented in the celebrated annual Boy Bumba Festival. Now, it's a ritual of magic, mystery, passion and faith that has been held here for over 80 years, inspired by local legends. A stadium, the Bumbaroda, was built in 1988 to accommodate over 40,000 spectators that come and take part in this festival each year. 
The Boy Bumba is listed on the official calendar of state and revolves around various enactments of the local legend about an ox known locally as a boy. Now again, when we did it there, we never went to that. They actually do a show for the cruise ship passengers. It's the only thing to do in that port of call. Yeah. So you come across on the tender, we used to, because we had about 700, we take everyone across, give them time to come across, and then we had a big venue, you take seats, and they bring out this whole carnival, and it is phenomenal. And that's one of the highlights of the cruise. So that's well, one thing you have to do. Now the performers that Glenn's has been speaking about, who produced the most colorful and flamboyant boy, win the contest, because it's also a competition. And it's taken so seriously about, uh, that the locals, I believe, Glenn, you have to tell us, paint their houses in the color of their favorite boy. Yeah, they do, yeah, they do. They do. As I said, it's all geared around this festival. And as I said, mm. when, you know, when we arrived in, in Pactins, some people didn't do the excursion. And I said, well, I don't understand the point of coming here because that's one of the main things to do. And as I said, you've got to do it. And as I say, the, the cruise ships will organise it. It's one of the tours you have to do. Just, yeah, just book it and do Get it. Get involved. So um, as Glenn was saying that even when the, the festival's not on, there are still these folkloric shows for visiting cruise passengers. And it's also a good place to pick up souvenirs. The ship's dock in the heart of the city's downtown area. Just a short walk away from the flea market where you can sell handmade masks, beads, paintings and woodwork, which has all been produced by local people. Now we move on to a place called Santarim, and this lies about 500 miles upriver, near the Amazon's confluence with the clear blue waters of the Rio Tapagas. So Santarim has been a major river port since the glory days of the 19th century rubber boom. In the 1920s, Henry Ford carved the immense rubber plantations of Fordlandia and Balterra out of the nearby jungle. And it's the third largest city in the Brazilian Amazon and possesses American roots as following the Civil War, more than 100 Confederate soldiers and their families settled here. Now the Southerners prospered in the new home and were a major force in Santorin's development. Santorin's main market, located across from the waterfront, features an expanse of stores, boutiques and stalls filled with every kind of item imaginable, including stuffed piranha. Did you try some stuffed piranha? No, or? I caught the real ones though. Dangerous things. I always remember that horror movie with Piranha, and it was frightening enough. Yeah. Santrum is also your gateway to Alta de Chio, uh, a quaint little town that's known for its tranquil, sandy beaches that multiply, of course, during the dry season as the waters recede. But the main highlight here is what's called the Meeting of Waters. It's a spectacular phenomenon in Santorum which occurs when the confluence of the Amazon River and one of its biggest tributaries, the Rio Tapajos, meet and flow as one, but they don't mix for miles. Next up, uh, one of Glenn's favourite places to stop, Manaus, and it was known as the Jungle City. It lies a thousand miles upriver uh, from the mouth of the Amazon, near the confluence of both the Rio Negro and the Rio Solomonis, the two major arteries that kind of form the Amazon proper. Now, for one brief shining moment of the 19th century, this port was the heart of the rainforest and was the world's wealthiest city. It has now been just as painstakingly restored to its former glory and is well worth a visit. I can definitely uh, vouch for that. It's a great base to take a riverboat trip up to witness the phenomenon of the Black Waters from the Rio Negro and the Yellow Rio Solomus as they flow side by side. Then follow the Rio Negro into the January Ecological Park, home to some incredible giant water lilies. And again, we did this, we did an overnight there. A lot of the guys went out and saw the caiman, you know, the small alligators, and they went and not caught them, but they could grab them and stuff like that. Next up, uh, Boca de Valeria, which literally translates as mouth of the Valeria River. It's one of the many tiny settlements in the Amazon basin and ships call here so that passengers can witness the lifestyle of its 100 or so inhabitants who still live in wooden stilt houses facing the river and basically base their lives around the river, getting about entirely by canoe. Something else I believe that you've witnessed firsthand. Yeah, um, so basically when we went there, it is a small village and what a lot of the passengers do and what you're gonna probably do as well is they, when they collect stuff on their travels, they, they do it to give to the give to the kids like pencils and pens and notepads and all that no sort of sweets. stuff. No sweets. No sweets, they mm -hmm. took them all over. And the funny story we had, when I went there, this guy invited me to his house to try some of the food and I realised I didn't have any money on me. So obviously he wanted something back. So I just gave him one of our hand sanitizer gels, that's all I had, and he went, and it, it, oh, wow. <laughs> I didn't know what else to give him. So um, I didn't have anything else to give him. But, so yeah. you're responsible for the poisoning. So you wash your hands. Is there only 99? Yeah, he didn't take that too hard. 99 but inhabitants. That, that is a real insight into the villages and how they live by the water. So that's really interesting to go to. Now you'll find a single room school, a small church, and a manic church of which can be visited. And the waterfront is still lined with thatched roof stalls selling handmade local crafts. So Boca provides a quiet and low-key day ashore, and if you're working hard in a city, running around, 
This is a chance to go and see how the locals live. It's a completely uh, different area to go out of your comfort zone, but as I said, well worth a visit. And as I said, when you go on this trip, stick some pencils and bits of paper in there, because they're the presents you'll give to the kids when you go across. So, the Anvilahanas Islands, I've been practicing that, yeah. uh, form the, the world's largest freshwater archipelago. And there are 400 of them in all. They cover an area of 56 miles in the Rio Negro, about 43 miles upstream from Manaus. And the islands are largely uninhabited. In the wet season, they're also largely submerged, with only about 180 of them visible during that period. Now, the hundreds of lakes, channels, and watercourses formed by the islands are a playground for amphibians, reptiles, monkeys, exotic birds, glens, and in the dry season, even more spectacular inhabitants like pumas, jaguars, uh, tapirs, uh, and they all return to the islands to forage. It's a nature lover's paradise. With their beautiful beaches, the larger islands are also playground for cruise ship passengers. Now, luxury lines like Silver Sea hold special experiences ashore, with white glove waiters serving barbecue and ice drinks to passengers on beautifully laid tables uh, on the beach. So next up, which cruise line should you take for a trip up the Amazon or or down the Amazon? Which, which is it, up or down? Then we go up and then come down again. I suppose, yeah. What goes up must come down. Exactly. That makes sense, okay. Now the Amazon is a favourite haunt of luxury lines. Um, you were talking before about Silver Seas. Um, and there's also Regent Seven Seas, Seabourn and Crystal. Premium Plus Oceana Cruises also operate uh, around the Amazon, as does the River Cruise Line Avalon Waterways. But the Amazon differs from other rivers because it's also able to accommodate larger ships. Therefore, you get people like Princess Cruises, P&O, Holland America, Fred Olsen, and more recently, Cruise and Maritime, also offering Amazon itineraries. And there are also some smaller ships that tend to focus their exploration on the less explored Peruvian stretch of the river. So let's have a look at Amazon cruise itineraries. Now, there are several itinerary options open for you for cruising the Amazon, ranging from three nights up to 70. You might as well move in. Now, Brazilian Amazon, uh, most of the Amazon specific itineraries originate in Manaus or Rio de Janeiro, sailing up the Amazon to the port of Macapa. Occasionally lines include an Amazon trip in a cruise around Brazil. Next up, you've also got the Peruvian Amazon. Now these are cruises of three, four or seven days. They operate from Iquitos uh, to the fascinating Peruvian stretches of the river. Less explored, um, you get different tributaries and, and these cruises include a tour of the Yacampa, or the Yacapana Isles. I will get it right one day. Oh, so glad you're doing this one again. Famed for their population of iguanas. And they also take passengers to see the Arapa River's pink and gray freshwater dolphins. I've seen pictures of them, absolutely stunning. They look like they're sunburnt. <laughs> they do, like they're sunburned. Now I think one of my favourite ways of doing it, and what we did it, we did Amazon plus Caribbean. Some usually originating in the Florida ports of Miami or Fort Lauderdale, concentrate on the river sailing and combine it with calls to a few Caribbean islands such as Barbados, St Thomas and Grenada. Plus a visit to Devil's Island, which again is another one really interesting to go see in French Guyana, home of the punitive prison regime chronicled in the novel Papillon. Now when we did it, we did none of that. We sailed from London. So now we're gonna give you some tips about cruising the Amazon. Now let's give you a few of the general tips, then I say you might wanna do a little bit more research. First of all, you're going to the rainforest, so prepare for rain. It's not called a rainforest for no reason. Now the average annual rainfall is a whopping 12 feet. That means you can expect at least some rain on about 200 of the 365 days in a year at a rough of 60 to 40 ratio between the wet and dry seasons. So pack a sturdy umbrella and a light hooded rain jacket. There you go. Now the other thing is insects. Now one thing I do need to warn you about is when we were on the ship, we never realised it, but on the first night we went down the Amazon, all the lights were turned off except for some on the ship and that does attract the bugs. We went outside where the smokers are and there was probably about 70,000 bugs all walking around up the walls, big things, small things, like something out of Indiana Jones. As you walked across the deck, you could just hear crunching as you're going across it. Now, some people will go, that's me not going to the Amazon, but we've got to warn you about it. It is something spectacular. And again, after a couple of days, you get to know them very, very well. I bought a couple of drinks while I was there as well. And uh, said you get to know the insects. But I would probably speak to your doctor if you're planning one of these trips, just to find out exactly what he recommends that you take with you. So it's always worth going prepared. 
and uh, make sure you have all your insurance in place. Fantastic. If you want more details, to our website where there'll be wonderful, knowledgeable people such as Glenn ready to help you, of course. You, but they can also contact us yeah. hello at planetcruise.co.uk. They can check us out on Facebook, Twitter. Make sure they go onto our YouTube channel. Now, what do they need to do with the YouTube? Well, you can subscribe, which of course is for free, which means you know you you know you are subscribed, so you get when when you go onto YouTube your inbox gets filled up with all the different videos. But if you want to get alerts yep. to tell you that, oh, a new Planet Cruise Weekly episode has been released and we really want you to press watch the bell, it, eh? then you press the bell, which is on the side of a subscribe. It's a new thing that YouTube have done. But if you press that bell, then you get a little note that pops up uh, and it will say, there's a new episode for you to watch or there's something else. You know, Keith and Ben have been on the, the Morella Discovery 2 or they've, they've been off on the Whatever. Whatever, down the Amazon, <laughs> up the Amazon, you name it. So hit that bell. The, if you want the other thing to do is, of course, go onto the website and check out that. It's got all the cruises on there, all the different destinations we go to, and that's what we're here in the office for. So give us a shout and we'll direct you. But I would recommend, if you've got the chance to do it, tick that off your bucket list. Definitely. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week. Cheers, guys.